All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Friday, August 30th. This is the 1230 update on Hurricane Dorian. We do have the 11 a.m. National Hurricane Center. And although nothing much has changed here this morning, we do see a very strong, very healthy, and quickly strengthening Hurricane Dorian uh, moving through the southwest Atlantic towards the state of Florida. And we are now saying with high forecast certainty that this will be a major problem for Florida uh, through uh, next week and possibly beyond. So let's go ahead and look at the latest on Hurricane Dorian. Real quick, let's talk about the 11 a.m. advisory. I always try to get this out of the way first if anyone's like doesn't have a full time to watch the full video. Uh, this is the latest National Hurricane Center. And again, guys, these videos are strictly for supplementary information, educational purposes. Uh, I can't make decisions for your family and nor should I. So always consult these kind of graphics like from the National Hurricane Center, your local officials and your county emergency management for your latest information for making decisions. Um, I can give you some ideas on evacuation tips, but I should not be making that decision for you or your family. So anyway, uh, 11 a.m. from National Hurricane Center, nothing much changed. The Hurricane Center finally did have to go ahead and show that turn on their cone, and they are buying into more of an East Coast turn uh, right now. But what has happened here today is we are now saying with high forecast certainty that the, the Hurricane Dorian will be in the vicinity of the Northern Bahamas in 72 hours. From there, the system will be slowing down as it crawls towards land. The landfall consensus continues to be somewhere from Cape Canaveral to Miami and that Palm Beach, uh, Melbourne, Port St. Lucie sort of areas. But we do not have the ability to nail down one, the specific exact area it's gonna make landfall. And we have a general area now. And two, this forecast turn is very uh, questionable as to where it happens. Some ideas are even that it could turn before land, There's, which is not likely and not shown by our computer models, but it, it can't be ruled out yet. And then we also have the more likely scenario where Dorian gets somewhere on shore in Florida and then makes his turn. And there's also worlds where the storm may get a little further and it may move up the Gulf Coast. So nobody in Florida is safe right now. I mean, the Keys are probably ironically the most safe place to be right now in the state or maybe like Pensacola. But um, that's kind of the latest from the Hurricane Center. It is still forecast to be a Category 4 at landfall and it's still expected to be a very dangerous, very powerful hurricane and almost a very historic hurricane. The last storm that hit this area of the east coast of Florida this strong was Hurricane Andrew 27 years ago. So I'm not directly saying this is another Andrew. What I'm saying is that's the kind of territory we're approaching. This is something that this side of the state doesn't typically see with storms this strong. So don't think just because, you know, you've seen some hurricanes before that you're ready for this one. This one's pretty pretty uh this one's pretty spicy so i would strongly say if you know someone that's saying oh i just i've seen them all don't worry about it try to convince them otherwise because they haven't unless they were in miami in 1992 they probably haven't seen something like this as far as whoever is going to get the core of this storm so that's kind of like the two three minute just get it in get you out type thing what you need to know what you really need to know from last night is nothing new has changed dorian strengthening it's going to hit central south florida more than likely and then we're highly uncertain as to where exactly it goes from there and everyone in the state of florida now is almost certain to get some direct serious impacts from hurricane dorian with at least tropical storm force winds everyone except maybe the western panhandle with that being said, let's kick back over to the satellite. A couple things I want to show you here this morning, guys. Number one, we do have an eye on Dorian now. It's, it's had an eye, but now we can see it on satellite imagery. It's still a little bit cloud-filled, but if you keep your eyes right here, you will be able to see that emerging right about there. It's not perfect yet, uh, but Dorian is not perfect and hasn't been for a while. But regardless of, guys, this is one of those hurricanes that although it's had its struggles, that core has remained tightly intense that, that that is very reminiscent of 2017 with storms like harvey and irma and these storms that just had these really dense cores that just could not be breached and just would not die dorian reminds me a lot of one of those storms so looking at the satellite presentation we can discern a couple things here today if i didn't have any computer models i didn't have any nhc tracks i could tell you with pretty certainty where this thing's going to go the next 24 or 48 hours look at the shape of dorian guys look at this oblong sort of shape it's not perfectly symmetrical if i draw a line around it it looks more like a pear or a pickle right well that's because dorian is finding that it has a weakness to its uh west so these clouds are expanding to dorian's west this tells us that whatever flow in the atmosphere which is somewhere like this this is what's kind of steering dorian to dorian's north we have an area of high pressure look at these clouds right here you see these like popcorn kind of looking clouds that like ceiling popcorns or something uh those are indication of a high pressure to dorian's north and we can also discern this by the fact that dorian's kind of stopping right here notice how the bands don't really they don't just wrap right around how they're kind of just all getting kind of bundled up and kind of jammed up right here that's because in the mid levels there's an area of high, strong high pressure 
that is kind of pushing. That's what initially is pushing Dory. Remember those models I talked about where you had the ridge out here? And I was showing you like the line where the line the sand was drawn. It was like a positive magnet and it was repelling Dorian away. Well, you can see this now in real time on the satellite. You can literally see it pushing Dorian away. You can see that Dorian can't advance its clouds in that direction. So where are the clouds advancing? They're advancing this direction. Well, Dorian's going to follow that weakness. Hurricanes just like to, they like to pinball around through the weakest area of flow they can find. And that's what Dorian is doing today. Some other things that concern me. One, you can see that around the eye, those higher textured clouds are starting to become more numerous and more sustained. It hasn't quite formed one real solid eye wall yet. We can see with some uh, microwave imagery passes that it kind of has concentric eye walls. It has like what it's trying to build a bigger eye wall. And then it's got a little smaller eye wall sort of trying to come up as well. And the convection is not sustained all the way around it. You see these like oranges are on one side of the eye, but the other side of the eye, if I drew it in half, is not nearly as strong. Uh, this tells us that we're kind of still seeing this thing kind of debate on how it wants to set up its eye and where exactly that wants to go. But it's getting healthier and it eventually we'll figure that out. Also, we see these really high clouds, these real thin high clouds over here that tells us whatever southerly wind shear we imparted on the storm. We had like a southerly dry air feed and we had some southerly shear, which is atmospheric winds that had nothing to do with the storm that were trying to disrupt it a little bit. But um, now we're seeing that that's really not the case anymore as these high clouds are starting to expand back this way. It tells us whatever flow is there is ending. So uh, the, the wind shear on Dorian is likely more like this in the upper level low off screen. And then we have the high to the north rotating clockwise. So we can see Dorian's track is pretty well set. This is where it's supposed to be in 72 hours. So we see that it's pretty much on schedule to go exactly there. That's why our forecast confidence is pretty pretty high at this point of where that's going to be in a few days it's timing the subsequent slowdown afterwards uh, let's go ahead and talk about a couple impacts guys I don't want to get too into the weeds with impacts yet, but I want to start highlighting a few general things. Number one, a very powerful hurricane near the Bahamas here, moving towards the state of Florida, will produce a tremendous amount of storm surge wherever it comes ashore. Whether it's up here, or whether it's here, or whether it's further south towards Miami, I mean, God forbid a major hurricane hitting Miami, that that is worst case scenario of not only Florida, but for the uh, potentially the entire country, uh, the ramifications of that. So let's hope this at least stays north of Miami. Uh, sorry if you live in one of the counties north, but... Um, that would be bad. But anyway, um, we do have the situation. This isn't a storm surge map, but I'm just saying for illustration, this is about where it comes ashore. Storm surge will be tremendous to the right of the storm where those onshore winds are piling up water. We also have king tides, which is astronomically higher high tides right now. So tides are running above average. And when the storm approaches slower... This gives you more time for water to pile up along the coast. Storm surge, again, guys, is that water rise at the coast. It is at the beach. That 10, 15, when they say 10, 15 feet of storm surge, that is if you're standing at the ocean with, the, with your feet just barely getting wet, that is water 10 to 15 feet above your head. That's kind of what we're talking. That's the power of these storms. And one, when you have a major hurricane, you get more storm surge. And two, when you have a very slow moving storm, it has more time to pile up water. If, if Dorian approaches 72 hours, in 96 hours even, if it takes a full day to cross the Straits of Florida, you're, or the Gulf Stream here, you're talking about a situation where you have 24 hours of those onshore winds pounding the coast, and that's 24 hours of tides. That's two full tidal cycles that can't leave. The tide comes up, it can't leave, well then the tide still tries to rise again in you know, about 12 hours as it does in Florida. So the, the storm surge threat is absolutely tremendous. So if you're near the coast in this area of the state, you have to leave. I mean, if you were at the coast within a few miles of it, you, you cannot stay. I mean, there's no debating it. You have to get out. Um, elsewhere, it depends on your situation. This, uh, although is showing rainfall, and rainfall is going to be another huge concern with Dorian. If Dorian does take this track where it kind of comes on shore and then moves up to the right, we're talking about a pretty tremendous amount of rainfall uh, to the tune of something we probably haven't seen since 2004 here in this area. Um, I believe Hurricane Francis dumped this kind of rainfall, but what we're talking about is one to two feet of rain. When you're measuring rain in feet, I know it doesn't sound as a colossal as it used to because of things like Harvey and Florence have kind of reset our definition of extreme rainfall, but this is no joke. I mean, we're talking about 16 inches of rain in Jacksonville, Florida, 17 inches of rain down here in Palm, uh, West Palm Beach, a foot of rain in Cape Canaveral. And I mean, these totals could go up if the storm's even slower. It's going to be to the right of the storm. Remember that right side is always the worst side of the storm. This is where the onshore flow is still occurring. The storm is still rotating like this. So it's pulling 
more moisture and wind from onshore. So the right side of the system will be much wetter than the wet side of the system where we see those three, four inch rainfall totals instead of the 16 and 17 inch ones with isolated 25, 26 inches. So that is something else to keep in mind, guys. The rainfall will be very extreme in this case. Uh, as far as wind speeds are concerned, a lot of people are, no, are asking, you know, what can we expect in Jacksonville? What can I expect in Orlando? And, and it's a little early to try to start discerning direct impacts. Like I said, that turns very important. We know Someone along this coast here could ex can expect Category 4 hurricane conditions. I mean, absolutely. I mean, 130, 140 mile an hour sustained winds, wind gusts higher, um, you know, type stuff. But where exactly that turn happens is very important. If the storm is able to get to the west coast of Florida in turn, that puts more and more people here for hurricane conditions. I would say everyone in the state of Florida in this general circle can expect winds at or above hurricane force for some period of time that is 75 miles an hour up in jacksonville it may just be a few wind gusts above 75 uh here in orlando it could be category one hurricane conditions with gusts in the two or three down here it could be category four or it could be different if something changes on the track if it stays offshore this drastically changes if it comes onshore it's gonna be rough that's what I would say. And then on the West Coast, looking more at tropical storm conditions and the West Coast of Florida needs to be prepared. If this does make it across and turn north, then you're going to be back under the gun for some serious hurricane concerns. Dorian will weaken as it as it gets on shore and it will weaken fast, but it's still a category four hurricane you're trying to spin down. It's not going to just disappear like that, guys. It's going to take a while. So everyone in the state of Florida in this general area needs to be ready and preparing for a hurricane at this point in time and then hope it's going to be better than what is forecast so that's about what I got for you here this morning this video has already been a little bit long uh, like I said we're kind of outside those realms of real specific impacts but I want to start giving people an idea of what to expect with this thing and um, just going to be watching it throughout the day this is the day where we're going to see Dorian continue to intensify it's still a little choked off for now but it's going to find a better environment I think we'll be at category three by this afternoon or this evening and then by tomorrow or tomorrow night we'll be looking at possibly a category four hurricane approaching the Bahamas uh, where hurricane watches are already up so we will begin to see those two p.m. and 8 p.m. advisories, intermittent advisories to the National Hurricane Center. So there'll be some additional information. But bottom line, guys, strong storm getting stronger, tracking towards central South Florida. The threat is very real tonight. It is as real as real gets. And if you know anyone in this area, they need to be preparing to leave. And if you're anyone in Florida, except for like the Western Panhandle or maybe the down, the, the, the Central Keys or South, South Keys, you need to be getting ready for a hurricane tonight. That is what the consensus is. So that's what I got for you this afternoon. As always, I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching and have a good one.